Welcome to Combat Cocktails. Today we're going to give you a stripped down, ultra pure episode that talks about the deep dark secrets of vodka. Welcome to Combat Cocktails. I'm Derek Schomer. I'm going to do a nice, easy episode, no camera switches, just rants. This is just all going to be about vodka and backing up some of my supported points that I've put out there about. You know, it doesn't necessarily matter what brand it is. Just drink vodka. It's flavorless and odorless. You're not going to know anyway. You're not going to tell the difference in a cocktail. Why are you spending an absorbent amount of money on it? Here's why. 520 million cases per year sold of vodka. 200 bottles of vodka consumed every second. That's a quarter of all spirits sold in the world. Vodka. Dailymail.co.uk reports that 1.9 liters of vodka are consumed in the United States per year per person. I don't. But I'm sure there's like two people in my neighborhood that do, so it kind of works out. In Russia, 13.9 liters per person every year. Vodka can be made from grapes, it can be made from sugar, sugar beets, wheat, winter wheat, whatever type of wheat, any type of grain, corn. Most of the time, it's going to be wheat or potatoes. So then how does it keep the light? Is it just sales? What keeps the lights on? How do these places stay in business? It's actually pretty simple. It's a neutral spirit. That's high proof that you cut down with water so you can actually make more and then you sell it. Vodka has to be distilled at 96% alcohol. Flavored vodkas outside of whatever their base distillate is have to be labeled as such. For example, Smirnoff Blueberry Vodka. It's flavored to taste like blueberries. But wait, there's more. This is Ciroc. Ciroc is a grape distillate. This is different than a grape vodka. This is made from grapes. Grape vodka is just there to taste like purple. So before we figure out what their secrets are, what builds the flavor nuances that people are so impressed with? The choice distillate makes a little bit of a difference. If you make it from potato versus wheat versus grape, it's going to have slight nuances to it. The yeast you use can give it a distinct characteristic, which is why a lot of brands' secret recipe really involves which yeasts they use, and they don't want to tell you because they don't want it to be reproduced. The water source. 60% of your bottle of vodka is going to be the water source, so the water you use is going to make an impact upon the product because 60% of that product is that. And the kill wrap. The one big one, the thing that makes the biggest difference is the raw material itself. Just like I always preach, good cocktails are made from good ingredients. Good vodka is going to be made from good ingredients. Use crap ingredients, you have crap vodka, right? Not really. You just have neutral vodka. But wait, that's one of the dirty little secrets. Hold on a second. One of the misconceptions is that vodka is a pot stilled product. Look at Tito's. Uh, there's other brands. They say pot stilled vodka. You can't make vodka from a pot still. You can't do it. Did they do it once upon a time? Yes. Did they also make weapons by banging stones and making them sharp and using the jab animals? Yes. Remember, legally, vodka has to be 95% or above. Pot stills cannot optimally make a percent of 95 and above for more than a few seconds. When you start distilling it, the, the ABV drops rapidly. So that means if you want to, I guess you can make the world's most expensive 100 ml bottle of vodka. That's going to taste like everybody else's vodka, but you did it in a pot still. So that doesn't make economic sense. So here are your big Dirty, ugly, little secrets about vodka. Bad, raw materials equal more neutral vodka. Why is that? If you use a high quality, very expensive ingredient, either you've really rinsed your wheat down, you've washed it, you've cleaned wheat, you have pristine, sterile environments, so there's no bacteria, there's nothing to really get in the way, that adds cost, and your yields go down, and it has a base flavor. Why would a company that has something that has a unique flavor and spent a lot of money to get it that way want to produce a neutral, odorless flavored product? These often nuanced flavors are what are often known as artisanal vodka, but more in marketing in a minute. So if you're not using expensive ingredients to make a neutral vodka, then why do you have neutral vodkas to begin with? Because it's possible to scrub out that vodka to be as pure and as odorless as possible. So if you use bad ingredients to start with, it is possible to strip out all the bad and be left with pretty much nothing. You cut nothing with water and you've got vodka. It's just a very high proof nothing. So next time you're drinking your ultra pure vodka, think about this. You can also filter urine to be crystal clear water. But are you going to drink it? Maybe if you're in space. Number two, most vodka producers aren't producing vodka. They're not producing it from their own grain. They're not fermenting. 
they're just buying it. Think about it. If you're not producing your own grain, who cares what yeast you're using? Your secret ingredient's gone. So, if you're not buying your own vodka, but you're selling vodka, how are you doing it? It's pretty simple. It's this little product right here. This is a product from Ultra Pure. This is a sugarcane neutral spirit base. It's 189.5 proof. Uh, this is a little bit missing. Some of it gets evaporated. There is really no practical purpose to owning something this high proof. But if you go to ultrapure-usa.com, and I'll put up a little screeny for you to see, what you'll notice is that you can purchase already distilled products straight from this manufacturer and have it shipped right to you. You can pick your base distillate and how many times you want it to have been distilled and what country it comes from. So boom, call that 1-800 number and you have a high proof product. What do you do with it? Well, you can cut it with water and guess what you have? You have fucking vodka. There's plenty of people who sell this stuff. Archer Daniels Midland, Midwest Green Products, also known as MGP. If you want to see our dirty little secrets about whiskey, you can watch that as well to learn even more about MGP. So there you go, you buy some really cheap neutral grain spirit and then you cut it with water. Now you can brand it, label it, market it and put a store behind it. That sounds crazy, right? Guess what? That's what most producers are doing today. Then there are companies that are making them themselves. I don't know necessarily, I know, uh, I believe Smirnoff just uses a neutral grain and then they cut it. If you look at Absolute, Absolute has their own stills, they have their own grain to bottle production. They've had it for hundreds of years. If you don't believe it, you can go tour the facility, you can go to Google Maps, satellite view to the distillery, and you can see grain silos. Holy crap, grain silos. That's weird. Number four, companies bragging about their water source are probably using neutral grain spirits purchased from one of these companies. Why? So if you create the full package, um, let's just take Svedka, because I don't know anything about Svedka's product, and import it from Sweden. If you put all the work in that bottle design, all the work into to distilling your own vodka using column stills, and you've got this this continuous process, or maybe you're doing it even more refined artisan and you're using column stills on your pot still. You can look at, I talk a little bit about pot stills and column stills in the video above. And you produce this product, why would you only talk about the water source? That's 60% of the product. What about the other 40%? When have you ever purchased a vehicle or a house and only 60% of it was worth talking about? So what they've probably done is they've got some fabulous water, they cut it with this specific neutral grain spirit, and then they've got themselves a vodka. Now, they just wrap a story around the ocean or the river or the lake or the stream or whatever. Maybe they take it a step different and they start talking about the filtration. Maybe it's filtered through coal. Maybe it's filtered through diamond dust. Maybe it's filtered through nude models' breasts. Yeah. Yeah, that's a thing. Why don't you go Google breast filtered vodka? I'll wait. Four. I don't think I did four yet. Company is bragging about how their vodka is filtered. So a little bit more about this coal and this diamond dust. Like any distillery, specifically rum, rum brands are the ones I typically focus on because I find rum more exciting. But it doesn't really matter who you talk to. Filtration will bring down and strip out the flavors. So why would you filter it through charcoal? You're looking for the most neutral flavor you can get. Let's go back to issue number one. Why would you take a great quality product and neutralize it as best as you can? The real reason is because you're probably using off the shelf, manufactured, neutral grain spirit and you wanted to give it your own flavor which is odorless and flavorless. If it's a super cheap distilled product, it's probably manufactured as fast as possible to make it as cheap as possible. So the only thing you could do at that point is filter the crap out of it to get it to taste like nothing. I mean, it's not really gonna cost you too much because it's a cheap product and your whole goal is to make it odorless and flavorless anyway so you can sell it for cheap money. Coal strips out those subtle congeners, those aromas and the flavor particles. So if you're losing that, everything's gone. You know what else is filtered by charcoal? My fish tank, I'm just saying. Number five, rounding. Google it if you don't believe this is a thing. Adding glycerin, citric acid, sugar, any of those things. They can help smooth out your vodka. So you filtered it, but it's still a little rough around the edges. Dab a little sugar, some glycerin in there, boom. All of a sudden, wow, this tastes like premium. No, this tastes like ultra premium now. Take a cheap product, add a little bit of sugar, and you can sell it for 20 or $30 more. Again. Rounding is there to cover up bad raw material. Goes back to those stupid materials again. And of course, the biggest one being, number six, marketing. Think about it. Your goal is to sell a flavorless and an odorless product that everybody else is also producing. How do you win? 
marketing. Ultra premium, premium, handcrafted, handmade, X number times distilled. These are all things you see on bottles of vodka. These are all things that the manufacturers are using to stand out. You're gonna take this, you're gonna cut it with water just like the other guy. How do you make yours better? You have to make it better through story. Why can they do that? Because none of those terms are legally required to be backed up by law. So if I want to, I can take this, I can get myself a license, I can cut it with some water, Heck, I can buy it already in the bottle. Have a machine, put the label on it, and a robot, put it in a box, and damn, I've got handmade New Hampshire sourced vodka. As a matter of fact, there are plenty of brand portfolios out there that sell only upper tier brands. Not to name any names like Hendrix or whatever, but if those brands are to keep their portfolio image, do you want to sell all products that are $50 or more out of your portfolio and then have one vodka brand that's $15.99? That makes the vodka brand look like trash. So how do you fix it? You can either go and try and find a really artisan product, or what's easier is just to bump the price up $30. Done. And the best part, you're gonna pay for it. What about that distilled number? Five times distilled, 10 times distilled, eight times distilled. Everybody wants to tell you how many times it's been distilled. This is, this is silver filtered, uh, Russian standard platinum. I don't know why it's not platinum filtered. Typically, your distillation is how many different columns it's gone through in either a continuous still or a pot still. You count the columns and you have your times distilled. The more columns it goes through, the more, more pure it's going to taste. The more pure and neutral and odorless. So realistically, something that's three times distilled, which is pretty standard, you, you do have to distill, uh, and you do want to have some of that cleaned out, but at the same time, eight times, ten times distilled is going to be so pure and so odorless that you're gonna want to pay more for it, right? You're literally paying more for less flavor. Think about that. So why are you gonna buy an off-the-shelf distilled bottle cut with somebody's water, stuck in a bottle, labeled ultra premium, maybe rounded with a little bit of sugar for more money than everybody else? <laughs> why do we do that? Because we're stupid. Like I said, most products start out with neutral grain spirit. Tito's, uh, how do we know like a Tito's might do that versus an Absolute besides the fact that you could tour Absolute and Tito's won't even let you come close to tour. Here's two satellite photos. One shows the silos that you can see clearly marked from Absolute Vodka. The other one shows you Tito's Vodka. There's no place to store grains. There's no place to store anything. So uh, grains go in silos. So where are their grains being stored? I don't know. Why don't you ask them? It's cheap product. I have no problem with Tito's. It's pretty odorless and it's pretty neutral. So my real question isn't where are you storing the grains. I want to know where you're buying your product. Ironically enough, Absolute purchases 20% of the wheat produced within their region. That's 125,000 tons of it annually. So how do these companies stand out? If you put all the work into producing your product, how do you stand out amongst all the people cutting their neutral grain spirit that they purchased with water and selling it to you at a cheap cost? It's really complicated because especially in the United States, we've been trained to say that neutral spirits are vodka. No flavor, no odor, nothing. If you get any type of weird sensation in your mouth when you're drinking vodka, it's a bad vodka. Probably because it's made by hand. Oh my God. How are we trained this way? It's, it's in the government's website. Their classification for vodka reads, neutral spirits distilled or treated after distillation with charcoal or other materials so as to be without distinctive character, aroma, taste, or color. So there you go. The only way you're going to possibly survive in that type of market is to do one of two things. So you can either own a 100-year-old distillery or 200-year-old distillery, been producing for years, have a million-dollar marketing budget, like Absolute, and be able to produce your product from grain to bottle. Or you, to remain competitive, you buy neutral grain spirit from one of these manufacturers, you bring it into your distillery, and at that point you either cut it with water, you call it good, or you do something more along the lines of what Tito's or some of these other guys are going to do. You can run that through a pot still a couple times, add some more distillation numbers to it, do whatever you want, give it a little softer flavor from the copper, and then cut it with water and bottle it and call it a pot still vodka. Because as long as it started at 95-96%, you're fine. You can do whatever you want with your pot stills. So go ahead, I dare you, start digging into your favorite vodka brand and see what they're using as their core liquid. 
Are they producing it from grain to bottle? Or are they just buying a bottle just like all the other people, putting a story and some water in it and calling it good? But when you start digging, I'm afraid to tell you, you might be upset by what you find. Unless, of course, you're a marketing major and you're impressed by their efforts. Sidebar, more videos. You can find the little dirty secrets of whiskey in that one. Down below is awesomedrinks.com. That's our store. Go buy some cocktail gear and help support me. Like this video, subscribe. We're teaching you how to drink.